Okay, welcome to part five of the Virtuoso series. Um, I want to go through uh, making some digital parts today, and we're going to go through a, whole, a couple of different versions of this, and they're all going to depend on having um, a standard cell layout so that we can then quickly make more uh, complex parts from simpler parts. And so the cells all have to have the same layout, they all have to kind of connect together. And this follows along with the chapter seven of the Brunvan book. So to get started, what I want to do is make a new layout cell view. And we're just basically going to walk through creating the different shapes. Um, so the first thing I want to do is create uh, my N active area. Um, the next thing I need to do is put in the um, uh, pair of um, taps. And um, the next thing we're going to do is create the end select. This is actually going to be the width of the cell. Um, using the rules from the Brunvan book, um, the a cell should always be on a multiple of 2.4 microns wide. Um, for the process that we're using. The P active is going to be another rectangle. We're then going to create uh, a P select layer around this. I also need to create the two PCC taps. Um, and now I need to put in the um, and well that goes around. The metal uh, power connectors up at the top. So now that we have that in place, um, we can come in and create the, sh the rectangles for the top and bottom uh, power rails. Okay, so um, now that we have the um, power planes in place, the next thing we need to do is put in the taps. So we'll create a via. Um, we're going to do the uh, end tap. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the end tap. Um, with uh, three rows, and we're going to center that right on top of the uh, top of the cell. And so the cell is supposed to be uh, 27 microns high. And so we want to make sure that we're centered right there on um, 27 microns. And then we're also going to want to create a, uh, the sub tap for the um, bulk. Oops. And again, we're going to want three of those. And we're going to put that right on zero, and it's going to go right on top of the, uh, the power rail. So this is the, uh, the basic cell. I don't have to get any gates or anything like that in here. Um, we'll put those in um, on demand um, as we need them. So I can save this. Okay, so now that we have a cell view, the next thing I want to do is be able to use that to make other parts. And so what I want to do is create an inverter. And so very simply, uh, we'll start with an inverter schematic. Let's make a new cell view. And the new cell view is going to be based on our inverter by one. And it's going to be a layout. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance instead of another drawing in each individual shape. And I want an instance of the cell view. And the yellow square there is marking the zero, uh, zero, zero origin. So I'm going to make sure that I'm at zero, zero. And if I hit Shift F, it will reveal the individual components now. Um, and so now what I can do is draw the poly for the gates. And so I'll select poly, create a rectangle, and uh, make sure that I can draw it here. I'm going to zoom in to the height of that, and it's going to be 0.6 wide, ideally. And what I want to do is center that between um, the, the two uh, drain and source. All right, so there's our poly. We've made a change. Let's do the verify DRC. And it says we're off. Oh, I didn't extend the poly beyond the end of the active areas. So at this point now, um, so even though I've dropped this instance, um, all of the tools still understand the underlying geometry. It's just that I can't change the underlying geometry of the cell. Like, I won't be able to move that component um, here. But I can uh, still do a DRC, and all of the things it's going to check are relative to the underlying components. And so this time, um, there were no errors. OK, so the other thing i got to do is bring in the pins. And the Brun van book wants us to have um, all of the pins on a standard routing grid. And it makes sense. It's going to make place and route a lot easier and cleaner. So to help with that, I'm going to go to Create Place and Route Objects. And I want to put Track Patterns on. And we're going to do Track Patterns for Metal 1 and 2 and 3. And for Metal 1, that's going to be a, um, a 3 micron pitch. And we're going to offset, I'm oh, sorry, 2.4 micron pitch. And we're going to offset by 1.2 microns. And we'll put like 15 going up the, 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 the part. And the exact same grid for metal 3. And then for metal 2, that's going to be vertical. And it's going to be pitched at 3 and pitched 1.5 in. And if I go over here now to grids, and I toggle the grids, I get the new um, grids that we just defined. And so this will help me place the individual components. And so um, I need to put a pin. And uh, we can put a pin pretty much anywhere um, on one of these intersecting points. So just like we did before, we'll do an M1 poly, I'll, only I'll make sure that it's centered on an intersection of those two. And that will become my input pin. So we'll do a create pin. And um, it's going to be in sorry, x. It's called x. And I want to make sure that create label is on so I can actually see the pin names. And um, looks like because I'm drawing it with the poly being active, it's going to put the pin on the poly layer. Um, I actually want the pin to be on the metal one layer. So we'll redo that. And I see now I made a mistake. Uh, my input pin X was actually IO type output. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to highlight all of the objects, or select all the objects, and hit Q. And now I can see each of the different things that I've selected. And I see under pins um, what layer the pin is on. And um, it's on metal one, uh, what it's connected to um, network-wise, if I wanted to have anything in there. But importantly, I can change its IO type. So that makes that correct. Um, I also need to connect um, the, the drain to the drain. And so with metal one selected, because that's a metal one part, um, I'm going to do a rectangle, and I'm going to turn on smart snapping. And again, I can add on to the geometry of an instance. I just can't modify the underlying geometry of an instance. And so in this case, I want to have a rectangle um, to connect those two things together. And I want a pin that's going to go um, right there. And so what I'll do is I'll create a rectangle. Um, I happen to know that they're going to be 1.2 by 1.2. And I want to set the justification of the rectangle to be centered. And we'll center the pin right there on the 1.2, 1.2 grid. And now I can create my output pin Y. 
and again we'll draw that on. I see that I've got metal one selected so that pin is correctly on metal one. And now we'll do a save. And we'll do a verify DRC. So extract. And now we can do our verify LVS um, against extracted. And we'll hit run. So the netlist failed to match, and the reason is I forgot to connect power and ground. So I'll slide up here, um, select metal one, hit R, turn on my smart snapping, and connect power, and slide down here and connect ground. And this time it's because I didn't label these VDD and ground. So we'll create a pin, and we're going to call this. Uh, VDD and ground. So VDD of course is up here at the top and we'll pick a, an area for the pin and ground is down here on the bottom. And now that the netlist match, I'll make sure I do my build analog. And this will allow me to use this part in an analog simulation. And almost done.